So globalisation, which is the process by which business activity around the world has become interconnected, has really helped businesses compete internationally. This has been influenced really by improvements to transport networks, so planes and ships, internet and telecommunications improvements, and the removal or reduction of trade barriers. A good example of this is Marks and Spencer, which now has over 1,400 stores in over 45 countries around the world, um, McDonald's, thousands of stores all over the world, and Jaguar Land Rover, which has set up a joint venture with the Chinese business Cherry, so that it can produce cars in China, for example. For me though, the really important question is how competing internationally affects business functions and business activities and the factors which influence that. Let's start with marketing. First of all, the product you make may need to be changed to meet the needs of the local market. For example, Jaguar Land Rover produce different versions of their cars to sell in China because in China a lot of the wealthy customers sit in the back so they have a chauffeur in the front driving them around and the car has to be designed differently. The way that your goods and services are promoted must take into account the local marketing. So which celebrities do you use in your adverts, for example? See, people like David Beckham have a global image, a global brand, and can be recognised around the world. But in India, for example, Sachin Tendulkar, who is a cricketer that you can see on that picture there, is very was very popular in India, and still is in fact, has featured in Coca-Cola's adverts over in India. Because customers can relate to him as a celebrity, as a face of the brand. So the way that you promote your goods and services has to be different from country to country, region to region. And what about the prices that you set? Well, here's a quick look at what the um, different types of pricing strategies we talked about were. But businesses need to know the prices charged by the firms that they are competing with, their competitors. Prices and profits may have to be lower in countries where incomes are lower, for example. And finally, the place. So businesses need to locate outlets and shops in specific places in different countries where there will be customers. But there are other factors, of course, which affect the location of your business. My point is this, is that your marketing mix may be completely different for your product in the UK compared to a location abroad. And a lot of market research, a lot of financial data is needed to make this really important decision in order that your products can be successful in an international market. So what are the issues for human resources when trying to compete internationally? Well, first of all, you've got to recruit, train and motivate local workers, the local labour force. Do you need foreign labour? Do you use local labour? Recruitment involves costs. Do you, are you able to train them to the standards that you expect? So when locating abroad, recruitment, training and motivation are huge considerations. And so is communication. You have to establish good communications with workers in different countries so that production is efficient and high quality. And how do you manage that? If you're based in London, how do you ensure good communication with all of your factories around the world? So communication is the second really important thing. And thirdly, you must obey and comply with local employment laws in the country where you've opened a factory, for example. What hours will you set workers? What type of contracts are they on? Because the laws about employment, local employment law, may be very different to local employment law in the UK. Now, a business may also need to change its business operations to compete internationally. You need to choose the most efficient method of production, such as changing from batch to flow or flow to batch depending on the production costs and the level of technology available. Now the quality of goods is a huge consideration. Buyers in different markets may have different expectations about the quality. So how will you as the manager 
ensure quality assurance and quality control, don't forget the difference between those two, are up to scratch if you move a factory or if you open a factory in a different country. You've got to maintain high standards. And then there's the sales process. Customers in some areas may prefer to pay in cash or deal with people face to face. So do you sell online? Do you open shops? But all of this has to be ascertained by careful market research and knowledge of your local market. Finally, business location. We've talked about this before and here's a reminder of the considerations. Now, when competing internationally, the finance function of any business has a huge role to play. So the finance function may need to arrange loans or overdrafts or sell shares to raise capital in order to expand abroad, whether that's opening a factory, whatever it is. So you need to know your sources of finance. You've also got to make sure that the benefits of relocating a factory or opening a factory abroad or selling your products abroad, abroad outweigh the costs of setting that up. So the costs for human resources, wages, your suppliers costs, rent costs, material costs, transportation costs. Businesses must work out whether they can sell at competitive prices prices whilst covering all of these costs and the finance function plays a vital role in that. Don't forget that the managers and the finance department will conduct analyses like break-even analysis and average rate of returns when considering whether to open a new location or invest in new machinery in their factories abroad. Everything we've done about finance counts for this unit. Just before we finish, I want you to try, when you're writing your answers, to remember these killer phrases we've come up with. So when answering the question, how does globalization affect a company's business activity? These are the phrases to build in to the answer you create based on this video.